Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, and prepare to bear witness to the marvellous magnificence which is the latest Virtual Stadium Tours video. Please remember to keep your hands and fingers off of the screen at all times to avoid impairing your viewing pleasure. Thank you very much for watching. And so today we are going to be taking a look around the Colonial Life Arena. This, uh, this mainly basketball arena is in South Carolina in the US of A and is majorly home to the University of South Carolina men's and women's basketball teams. Um, the arena was opened as a replacement for the Carolina Col Coliseum and its original name when it opened in 2002 was the Carolina Center. However, um, in 2003, the Unum uh, Corporation purchased the naming rights for the arena and so renamed it to the Colonial Life Arena after the Colonial Life and Accident Insurance Company, um, which is a subsidiary of the Unum Corporation. Anyway, the overall, let's talk about the arena's capacity now. And this arena is actually set up for a few different things, like many indoor arenas like this around the world. It's set up for basketball, it can also be used for ice hockey, and there have been many music concerts or, you know, political rallies and things taking place in the arena. Um, when there are the basketball or the ice hockey taking place in the arena, the overall capacity is around 18,000, whereas when the concerts or the political rallies take place, the overall capacity is up to around 19,000 because they can use some of the floor space, um, some of the sort of court space or ice or rink space um, for seating so they can pack extra people in. And obviously rallies and concerts like that, often there are a lot of people standing up so they can just get more people into the arena. Um, as I've already stated, it was opened in November 2002 and it broke ground in April 2001. So it took about a year and a half to build at a cost of the time of 65 million US dollars which when translated into 2016 currency is around 86 and a half million US dollars. Now, I stated that this arena can host ice hockey games, and that was because it, it was intended to be the new home of the ECHL's Columbia Inferno. However, due to legal issues with the funding of the facility, the Inferno never actually have played a game in this arena, which means the whole compatibility for ice hockey has been a little bit dead on dead in the water really and they've never really used it majorly for that event but that being said even though it is mainly a basketball venue there have been other events take place as i've said it hosts many concerts and there's a long list here of big huge bands that have played in this arena including the likes of elton john red hot red hot chili peppers britney spears um, you know, huge, huge um, musicians. Paul McCartney's played here. Um, I also stated that it host is host has been host for political rallies. Um, it was host. It was actually the first political rally to take place in the arena was um, President George W. Bush in two thousand and three hosted uh, a, a commencement speech in the arena, and this was set to be home. This arena was set to be home for in December 2007, a rally for Barack Obama. But because they had Oprah Winfrey put onto the docket to be speaking at the same rally, the tickets sold out much faster than expected, which means they moved the rally to the nearby Williams-Brice Stadium, which is also affiliated heavily with the University of South Carolina. But as I've already stated, because of the large amount of concerts and rallies and things which take place in this arena, it's actually meant that this arena has been ranked as one of the highest in world ticket sales. In 2003, it was ranked as 22nd in the world in ticket sales, and it was the number one ranked arena in the Carolinas, so the North and South Carolina states in the US. And it is the number two rated university arena currently in the world, or that was in 2005, sorry. So in 2005, it was the number two rated uh, university arena in the world, uh, just based on ticket sales for touring shows. So for musicians that would turn up, play a show, and then move on to the next city. Anyway, finally now, let's move on to one final fact, and that is that um, several other slightly weird or different events have taken place in this arena, including none, no less than the High School Musical Concert and Disney on Ice. So, something a little bit different that uh, 
that you can't really say about many arenas of this sort that Disney on Ice have been there, which I guess means that they did eventually make use of the ice rink capabilities in the arena, even though it was never really used for what it was originally intended for. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That's all we've got time for today, but I will see you next week. Thank you for watching this Virtual Stadium Tours video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see every new video this channel uploads as soon as it uploads them to the interwebs, why don't you press the subscribe button down below this video right now. Goodbye.